What's good, Internet? We've all been a victim of Unity's animator at some point in our career. Whether it's some issue with root motion, the guys clipping through the floor, or this. Looks familiar. But this whole box is Pepe Sylvia! But today we're going to clear that up. We're learning blend trees. And by the end of this video, you should be able to turn some animation that's so janky like this into something smooth like this. And it won't even take that long. But before we start, it really would mean a lot if you like this video. It helps me out so much. And if you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing. We'll knock it out. It'd be awesome. Also, if you want to follow along with this project, you want the project files or anything like that, it's all on GitHub. You can even have this Spider-Man I made. Use it in whatever you want. As long as Marvel doesn't see you, I won't see you. So go ahead. And if you don't know how to use GitHub, I made a video about that, so you can check it out right here or here, one of those sides. Go do that, follow it out, knock it out because it's going to help so much. And with that, let's get started. So, so this is where you should be starting. A little scene with our little Spider-Man. He's all set up. Uh, he's got a character controller, an animator. You know, I made this stuff. It's very simple stuff. Nothing crazy. And a no-blend space animator. Uh, I'm going to drag in this demo scene from... The Cinti assets, which are really cool, but you can use any you know city you want. You can even use a plane. The city isn't necessary, but it adds a nice touch. I like it. Uh, if you want something like this, I'll put a link to some of the free city assets in the description, just so you can download them from Unity. I'm not supposed to share this, and so I'm not going to. Spider-Man is fair game, but if we uh, but if we push play from the beginning, we're going to see you know that his animations are a little bit wonky. You know, he's got a some issues here. You know, he's running side to side, doing what we want him to do, but as soon as we, like, you know, start messing with things, you know, sometimes he's playing the wrong animations, and it's, I mean, it's just hard to find, uh, you know, the right things to put in here. So here's his animator. If we open this up, we have this little triangle of things. And so it's really hard to read, even this, and there's only, what, four animations. We got run forward, run back, left and right. Uh, we haven't added walks. We haven't added jumps. You can see how this can get really out of hand. And all we have is two parameters, right? A vertical and a horizontal. So what I'm proposing here, and forgive me if I'm wrong. No, I'm not. This is really the right way to go. Delete all this. We don't need it. It's garbage to us. It's useless. Because what we're going to do is we're going to go here, and we're going to create a new blend tree. So it was state, new blend tree. All right? We have our blend tree. Let's double click into it. Now we're in here, right? We're going to rename it locomotion because that's what that's what it is. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it movement. You can call it, you know, dance party, whatever you want to do. And as you can see here, we have one parameter. We have vertical. But we need two, right? And that actually comes into hand in this 1D blend type. So there's so many different types of blend type. We're going to need a 2D because we have two two dimensions, right? We have two variables. So there's two, there's three kinds of 2D, um, there's three kinds of 2D blend trees. We have the 2D simple directional, which involves, you know, one, one uh, animation per direction. We have the 2D freeform directional, which you can have multiple animations per direction, like a walk and a run, uh, and just the left, right, up and down, you know, and you can go any, any direction you want. And then the 2D freeform Cartesian, which is less for movement and more for other parameters. According to Unity's documentation, it's a, it's a little bit, you know, seems a little bit extra, but it, there's probably a great purpose for it. Today, as you can guess, we're using the 2D freeform directional because we have some animations here that are, you know, runs and walks and all this. So first, we have our parameters. We want to set our X to be horizontal, just like it would be in any other thing, and our Y to be vertical, right? And let's make sure that's zero so we can, you know, get some good test values going. And that's good. So in order to create, create and add a motion, you know, all you do is Click this plus, add motion field. We're going to add two. It's going to show up this little box, right? So just to show you kind of what this is doing, let's leave this one at zero, zero, and let's change this one to zero, one, okay? And as you can see, this dot moved up here. So what that means is we have two different directions, and if you change this, you know, to, to negative one, it's going to go behind it, and as, you know, the, the coordinates go, one, zero will be to our right, and negative one, zero will be to our left. You can move this all around, and it's going to give us different areas that we can do this blend tree in. So uh, without further ado, let's start adding some animations and kind of show you what it, what it does. So here we have Mixamo folder. I'm going to open up the, lo the Locomotion pack. 
you guys have this if you went on uh, if you went on the GitHub or if you want just get these off Mixamo, you can get the locomotion pack. It's right there. Uh, we have our idle, right? So let's put idle at zero zero because that's where no motion is, right? So we have zero on horizontal and zero on vertical. That's going to be idle. And then if we want, let's do zero one, which is run. And I like to organize these in kind of like a, I mean, it's, it's normal for me. I guess you could put it in any way you want, but it doesn't really matter. So we have zero one and that will be our run forward. So let's put run forward and kind of show you what happens. So if we push play here, our guy is an idle. And if I drag this little red dot, which changes the values on the screen, he starts running. He starts moving toward what we want. And as we go back, he goes back. So I, I think you can see the power in this, right? We haven't done much, but we can literally add as many animations as we want, as many directions as we want. And it only gets kind of better as long as the animations work together in how it works. So let's, let's try again. Let's do a, let's, let's add a reverse. Let's add, a, let's add it. Let's add a left. Let's add a left because reverse, we're going to do something a little special here. So let's, let's say left. Okay, here we go. It's already ready. So negative one on the X, zero on the Y. We're going to add a run left. So let's run left and see what we got here. So as we do it, he runs to the left, he goes back, he runs forward. And actually, if we go in between all of these, he's going to be doing a little bit of all of it, right? So it's, it's, it's really powerful. My foot's asleep. It's really powerful in how much it can do. So there's actually something else we can do. As I said, we're doing freeform directional, so we can add multiple animations for it. So let's say we wanted a walk forward. Let's go put this here. Let's say zero. And then in the forward, we're going to do like a 0.3, right? So we're not going all the way to one, but we're doing like a 0.3. We're going to walk. We have this walk forward animation. Let's pop that in here. And as you can see, now it's even smoother as we go. We're walking, walking, and now we go into the run, right? So this kind of adds that depth there that as you're increasing this value from zero to one, all of a sudden you're smoothly moving in, th in that motion and there and back. So let's do the same thing for the left. So we have our run strafe left, which is negative one, zero. Let's add another motion field. I like to move it in front. Let's do negative point three, zero, and that's going to bring it there. Let's do a walk strafe left right here. And the same thing, we're walking, 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 running. So if you want to pause the video, uh, you can do both the, the right animations and we'll see if you could do it. I'll give you a minute right now. And now, okay. So now we're moving on. Let's add a motion field for the right. So let's do two motion fields for the right. And that would be one, zero and 0 0.30, right? Because there's one on the X, zero on the Y, we're going to the right. I'm going to move this in order here because I, there's no order to it. And uh, so we have our walk strafe right, which goes into the point three, and our walk and our run strafe right, which goes into the one. And so now if we look, yep, looking good, looking great. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And we're going crazy here. For the back, I do something a little special because I don't have a back run animation right now. So what you can do, and this is not, you know, the end all be all, but it works for prototyping, no problem until you get your mocap in or whatever, is you can take your run animation and just kind of slow it down and, and make it reverse. So let's, let's, let me show you. So we have our run forward and we're gonna, uh, let's, let's change these. So we have zero, negative 0.3, zero, negative one, which brings it back right here. That's these two points right here. And so we're going to add our run forward to this far one. And all we're gonna do is just like do like a negative 0.7, right? So that slows it down and reverses it. So the negative will reverse it, and the 0.7 makes it 70% of the speed. So let's do the same thing for the walk forward. We'll do a walk forward here, and we'll do negative 0.7, just to keep it kind of the same. And as you can see, we get our kind of, oh, let's push play. As you can see, we're kind of getting a slower walk than we would right here. So it's just a little bit slower, and it's backwards. Now it's not you know, convincingly you know, a backwards run, because he just looks like he's going you know, in reverse. But uh, for a prototype, it's fine. It looks good. And the, the, the main thing here is that we have perfectly blended, seamless blending animations throughout our whole thing. So with that, let's go back to our blend tree here. We have it called, uh, let's call this locomotion too, because I didn't see that we just called the blend tree locomotion. That way it's titled well. And that's it. I mean, it's all set up. That's the, that's the basics of it. We're not, we're not done yet. We're going to make it a little better. But honestly, if you look at it now, 
it's it's going to be night and day from what it was. So we're here. We have our animations, and even as we go to the left and right, we are moving different ways, right? But, you know, we don't only... We added that walk, and we added that run, but since we're using normalized values, we're kind of just going in the same area, right? We're kind of going towards it, and even if we don't, like, we need some kind of a, a convincing speed up and stuff like that. So what we can do is we can add a walk and a sprint and kind of see what happens. What we're going to do is we're going to go into this third-person character controller I made. It's very simple. Not, I mean, you can use it if you want as a, as a basis, but it's, it's nothing crazy. And okay, there we go. So right now we're just setting our speed to run speed. I've made a walk speed for it, so we're going to go through that. So let's go here, and if we look at player input, I've also got a sprint, which checks if the sprint button is pressed. In this case, it's the left shift. And all we're going to do is go into update, and we'll say if input dot sprint, which means the sprint is pressed, then what we're going to do is we're going to set our speed to run speed. Else, we'll set our speed to walk speed. And with that, what we want to do is also kind of change whatever the animator does too, right? So we set 0.3 to be our walk values. So we kind of want that to reflect here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a float. So let's go private float, and we'll call this m anim horizontal. We'll call one m anim vertical. And that's just going to hold our float values for here. So what we can do is set m anim horizontal equal to 1 if we're sprinting. We can also do the same for vertical. So we do the same thing, m anim vertical equals 1. And then here, we can also set this to 0 0.3 like this, so 0.3f and 0.3f. And so what that will do is if we're walking, it will be 0.3. If we're running, it will be one. So let's change that, and that's just the first step because obviously it won't be extremely smooth, but we'll, what it will do is kind of show a difference between our animations, and that's, that's the start of what we want. So let's go here, but also times our input. So if our input's zero, then we don't want anything. So let's do times input.x here and times input.y here. And there we go. That should fix our little issue. So if you look right here, when we push play and we walk, we're walking. And if we sprint, we're sprinting, right? So it's looking better. It's looking good but we kind of still have this jump between walk and sprint, right? So we're not getting that full, you know, range of motion that we would have as he builds up his uh, speed, right? It's kind of an, an illusion, but it just does not look good, right? So it, it looks okay, but it's not all the way there yet. So what we can do is actually use like a, a lerp kind of thing where we set these values and get them up to where we need them to be as opposed to, you know, having them there. So what we could do is, we're not going to set them here, hardcore, but what we can do is let's create a separate function. We'll call it animate. So we'll say private void animate. We'll take in our input. So we'll say vector to input so we can pass that in. And we'll get these from here. So just copy, get those, copy, paste, because we're going to need that. And we'll just set this into here. And so what we're going to do, we have this nonsense here. What we're going to do is we're going to first get our target uh, tar get our target value so we'll say float target horizontal would be equal to input.x right so that's our horizontal and then it would be times whatever our multiplier would be either 0.3 or 1 right so we're trying to see if we're sprinting or not so we need a multiplier so we'll say multiplier and that would be so our float multiplier multiplier yep would equal if input.sprint is pressed, then it's going to be 1. Otherwise, it's going to be 0.3f, right? So now we're multiplying our input by our multiplier, and that's our target value. We can do the same thing for vertical. So we'll say target vertical is equal to input.y times multiplier. So we have our targets. And so now how can we do this? 
basically what we're going to do is we're going to say if our m anim horizontal value is less than our target. So if our target is, is higher than that, then basically all we have to do is add to our anim horizontal. So what we're going to do is add time dot delta time. So it's kind of lurping through. And then we can also set some kind of an, an anim, anim smoothing speed. So let's, let's create a variable called that. So let's do anim smoothing speed here. And let's go up here and create a serialized field for it. So let's say serialized field private float anim smoothing speed. We'll set that equal to like, I don't know, let's say two right now. You know, give, it, give it a little bit of smoothing as it goes up and that's it. And then if we go, if we're else, if our M anim horizontal is greater than our ta target horizontal, then what we're going to want to do is we're going to subtract by this, right? So we're just basically moving up and down the line smoothing our animation blending and then we're going to do the same thing for vertical so if anim t vertical is less than target vertical we're going to add so we're going to say plus equals time dot delta time times our smoothing and then if else if if it's greater so we'll say m anim vertical this should be vertical these autocompletes sometimes bite you in your butt pay attention M anim vertical is greater than our target vertical, then we're going to minus equals again. And so why we're doing the else if is obviously if it's the same, we don't want to do anything to it. We just want it to say, you know, thanks for reaching the value. We're good to go. So what this is doing is it's going up if we needed to go up, down if we needed to go down. So now all we have to do is put this value in here that's kind of being lerped constantly every frame into this position. And as we move, it's going to go up and down. But first, we have to call it. See how it's gray? Just go at the end of move, call animate dot animate input, the little input, right? This vector two input we have here. And also get rid of these in update. Let's get rid of these calls here. All we need to make sure is that the, the speed is the run speed and the walk speed. It's going to look nice. We're calling our animate, which is lerping the values to what we need them to be. That's it. Easy to go. So. If we push play, we should have the smoothest movement you've ever seen your entire life. I'm not going to lie to you. I've seen smooth movement. This is going to be the next level. This is going to be something you've never seen before. Well, maybe you have. You're great. <laughs> Do you see this? Do you see this? This is what happens when you make tutorials. This is what happens when you make tutorials. We're getting our input. Multiplier will be this. One, input.x. Yes. Anim horizontal is less than target horizontal. Then we're adding to it. And our anim smoothing speed is zero. And that can sometimes happen. So what you have to do is go into your player and look at this. Who knew? Let's set it to two. As can happen sometimes, you overlook a couple things. But with practice, you find out exactly what it is relatively quick. We're walking. We're running. We're walking. The smooth movement as we go back down, you can change this smoothing speed to be slower. And as it is, you know, it, it gets to where you want it. I would say maybe let's try five. So we're here. He's looking a little crazy. And that is, you know, there's a little fix you could do here. So you could say, basically, we'll say if uh, the absolute value, so we'll say mathf.abs of m anim horizontal m anim horizontal minus target horizontal if that's less than like 0.1 let's say 0.1 f then we'll just make m anim horizontal equal to target horizontal right so then it stops messing with all this stuff right and the same thing so basically we're just kind of if it's close enough we're gonna we're just gonna give it that little extra push to get there so we'll do the same thing for vertical so we'll say if our vertical here is minus our target vertical. If the absolute value of that is less than 0.1, let's just do what we need to do and get our get it there. Let's make some space here. I, as a crazy choice, decided to use no no curly braces, but it, it worked out. It worked out. We can make some extra space if it's a little confusing for you. Here's our ifs and else ifs. We have horizontal lerping. 
vertical lerping. We have uh, kind of setting the values once we reach a close enough threshold, setting the values by threshold. And then we're actually setting them in the animator. And that's that. So if we, if we look again, we're going to have our values kind of get to where they need to go and be there. And that's really all, there, all that it takes. It's, it's, it's not magic. It's a little bit of, you know, a little extra work, but it's a lot less confusing if we look at that animator compared to what it was before. Now, if you see, look, we're getting to our point. We're going here. We're looking good. Changing our values, going based on what we want. It's looking great. And the animator looks much cleaner, if I do say so myself. This, looking like this, is insane. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a like, subscribe, and thanks.